Okay guys, so here's what I use for my brake leading system. So this is the Motive Power Bleeding uh, kit. You can order a full kit for the Subaru. It's actually called a Ford three prong model. Or you could get the pump and the fitting separately. And obviously you can get the fitting for any type of vehicle. So if you have a, a Honda and the Subaru, you can get whatever uh, master cylinder adapter for each. So you'll have to check the model number, but for us Subaru guys, we need the model 1107. It's called a Ford three prong adapter. Yes, I'm 100% sure it works for Subaru. I've used it many times and I've done my own brakes before my race events as well and absolutely never had any issue. So what I have done ahead of time was I've gone and I've uh, cleaned the brake system and the pump, not the system, just the pump, with uh, some IPA, isopropyl alcohol. I've gone and I filled it and pumped it out so we're all good and I shook it around, whatever, uh, dumped it. Now I'm ready to begin my actual cleaning. So this is the uh, brake fluid that I use. It's Willwood EXP 600 Plus. It's a dot four, not a dot five. I like the dot four, it's less hygroscopic. And this Willwood actually has a lot higher of a boiling temperature than uh, any of your Motil, any of those other typical brands. I don't know if Redline makes it, but these guys actually have a much higher boiling point, wet and dry. So wet, it's 383 degrees Fahrenheit boiling, and dry, it's 572 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and I run this brake fluid obviously all year round. I'm a winter driver. I have driven it for two years now in the winter and had absolutely no issues. Um, obviously I replace and flush my system after every race event, so I'm taking care of that way. So I'll open this up. I have three of these. I usually use about two per flushing. And that may be more excessive, but that's because I go and I go back and redo my flush twice, so I have zero chance of air. So I'll open this up, and what I like to do is pour a little bit in. and seal it up, put the lid back on my container properly, give it a shake around, and then I will pump this guy up and I will I'll drain it into this. And that's just to get the line and everything clean. Well, it's just mainly to flush out the system so that I know that it's good and that there's only brake fluid in the lines. So I'll just do that. I mean, I waste a little bit of the brake fluid, but I'm certain that there's no contaminants living in there and uh, messing up anything for me. 
so this has a an o-ring that I am just in there lubricating with my hand and with that being said I will fill this guy up and get to the bleed okay guys so just at the master cylinder here I am going to remove the cap and you notice I have a rag everywhere what I'm going to do is stick the rag underneath my master cylinder because undoubtedly there will be some drips I'll take my turkey baster give it a few little pumps I've cleaned it with isopropyl alcohol take the cap off put it on the side inside here there is a little screen so I'll stick that on my rag. Now I'm just going to push out the air, suck up, and get this down to as low of brake fluid as I can. Tip. So obviously that's as far as I'll go with suctioning. Now I will fill my motive power bleeder. Okay, so here's my canister, lid is on, and tight, and I will wipe down the outside of this. Uh, I already used brake fluid on the inside of here to wet and moisten and lubricate I will call it so that the o-ring is slightly lubricated to be able to push this on because it is meant to be a tight fit and it is certainly a tight fit So 
if it's not going on. Just find your location of your prongs. There. And give it a twist. And it's on. So at this point, I'm good to start pressurizing the system. So I will pressurize the system to 15 PSI. I usually take it a little bit higher than 15 PSI. You see the brake fluid already going through the system and into the master cylinder. So, I'm at just above the 15 PSI. There will be a tiny bit of fluctuation, but you want to overall maintain that you're staying above what you had it at. I'll leave it here for about two minutes just to see and make sure that none of the pressure has dropped. If the pressure has dropped significantly, I could have a leak somewhere. If not, then I will start going. So to bleed your clutch, you're going to use a seven millimeter wrench and the clutch is directly in the engine bay here on the slave cylinder. And to bleed all the Brembo's, you're doing 11 millimeter. And in order to bleed the Brembo's, uh, I'm going to start passenger rear, driver rear, passenger front, driver front. That's my brake order. Um, and you're going to want to bleed the inside bleed valve first, followed by the outside bleed valve. Doesn't matter as long as you're doing it in passenger rear, driver rear, passenger front, driver front, and bleeding the inside bleed valve first before the outside, you're good. Um, you wanna bleed the inside obviously because you want to bleed the line up to the caliper first and then work your way out. If you were to bleed the outside first, there'd be chance of having air in where the inside bleed valve is and potentially leaking that over to the outside while you're trying to bleed the inside secondly. So that's how I do it. It's worked always for me for my fronts. Now that I have the rears, I'm not going to do any different. So you can see my pressure here has maintained at 15 psi. So I'm going to pump this back up to about 17 psi and give her and all I'm gonna have to do is come back after I'm bleeding one caliper and just double check that my pressure is still at or around the 15 psi mark and that should be good because I still want to maintain the pressure and obviously I don't want to have a leak blowout or anything so with that being said I'm gonna take you guys to the rear and follow me all the way around doing my uh, bleed my flush Okay guys, just at the passenger rear first caliper, I like to have a flathead to remove the caps on the bleeder valves. I just find it's way more handy than trying to do it by hand. So I'll just lift the lid and then pop it over. Again, lift the lid, pop it over with my finger. So I'm not marking up the bleeder itself. So I have my 11 mil. Obviously I'm gonna do the inside first. So get your 11 mil on. And then I have my, not bleed valve, but bleed bottle. So I'll stick that guy on and air always rises so you'll want the 
valve or the bottle to be higher to force the air out of the system and then same thing lefty loosey righty tighty so here we go uh, I think you guys can see what I'm seeing and now you guys can see what I'm seeing So I'm going to pop this, I'm going to get a big air rush, that's okay. I don't know if you guys can see the air bubbles coming through. Still some air coming through. So this is your longest line. So this is going to take a little bit of time. I will wait here for maybe a minute or two at a time, at least, with the valve open. Um, sometimes I like to shut it and then reopen it. And what that does, I think, is just allow the air a little bit of extra motivation to come out. But so far the line is looking good. I will keep going for another minute. If you lead the first one correctly, all the rest is back to actually, if you lead them for extra long, the front two will be just a cake cakewalk. So I'm pretty happy with how that's looking. My fluid is nice and clear now. I'm not getting any significant change in bubbles or anything coming. There's no bubbles coming at all. So I'll give it a few open shuts, open shuts, and then I will close it. You guys don't need to torque that hard at all it'll stay shut with just very little pressure um, I've taken my 11 mil off now bleed bottle low just so that the fluid line drains down there okay my line is clear stick this on the outside valve now and now you guys should be able to see this pretty good open I don't know if you see that air coming so these are brakes that I completely rebuilt from the inner square cut seal pistons and now the dust shields out so I want a good flush through the system uh, they were baked obviously I had uh, them baked powder coated I should say and that seemed to work fine so I'm not worried about contaminants over I did plug everything off while I was storing them so I'm getting no bubbles now still have my bottle above grade line oh, had a little bit of air there a few little bubbles Okay, close 
that up. Bring the bottle down. There, let that drain. Now let's go driver rear. Okay, same thing on the driver's side. But now on the rear, still on the rear, I should say. Oh. Caps motivated to come off. Otherwise, they are a pain in the ass to get. There. There. Okay. Lead valve up. Inside first. Fully inserted on. Okay. Now, let's see. Open. A little bit of air initially. Line coming now. So I'll keep running this. For about a minute. coming there. I think that's it. You can see I work the valve open and shut. Open, shut, shut, open, I mean, shut, open. So you don't want to open the valve, uh, the bleeder valve too far because then that'll actually let air itself in through the threads of the valve. If that happens, just to shut it, open it a slight amount, and just wait for the pressure to take the air back out of the system. Okay, I'm getting no air at all. Shut this in five, four, three, two, one. Back, forth, back, forth, back, forth. Okay, I'm shut. Extend it lower. Let it bleed in. Put it on the front. Transfer. And let's go. There's a good amount of air. I'm not sure if you guys can see that, but nice little blips of air there. So now that there's a line that comes inside the bleeder valve bottle. The air has stopped coming into that because I can no longer see any bubbles forming on the inside. So I'll go open shut a few times here. So at this point I'm getting 
pressure from directly from the brake line. It's gone through all the caliper. So I'll go open shut it a few times. And shut it down. And then I'll move on to the passenger front. Alright. Okay, just at the front. I'm at the passenger front. I'll pop the caps. On these guys. Done. Okay. Valve is above. Open. So again, I'm doing the inside first, then the outside. Uh, just before I came here, I did the check on the pressure tank, and my tank was about at 14 psi so I pumped it back up to about 17 psi and I had a lot of uh, fluid in the tank still so that's good so I'm just rocking this back and forth shut open shut open shut open so I just want the line to come clean and full you'll see my ble bleeder valve bottle is uh, almost full for a flush I'd, lo I'd love to get it pretty much full for just a maintenance bleed you obviously don't need to bleed obviously out that much Shut, open, shut. I'm not getting any air whatsoever except for the first little bit. So I'm going to shut this guy up and start with the outside. Okay, that's snug. So you'll see I waited and did a lot longer for the For the rear two lines and that's just because there are longer lines and it takes a little bit longer to bleed those through properly open so if you can see that there's the bubbles coming in for the line just like to take it so that those bubbles stop. Actually, they pretty much are. And shut. Open. Shut. Good. Put the tank lower up and out. Now for the last one, the driver's side. Okay, the driver's side. The last of my bleeding order. I'll remove the caps. There. Ok, 
Okay, inside. Open. Focus ST going by. Open shut. Open shut. Open shut. This is the shortest line, so you won't have to do this that long. Shut. Shut. Open. Shut. Open. Shut. I think I'm happy with that there. Stick it lower onto the outside. Open. do is I'm going to bleed my clutch. I'll take you guys in there as best as I can. Okay, I got you in the drivers or in the engine bay with me. My tank is still above 15 psi. I've got my 7 mil wrench and I've got my bleeder valve tank, 7 mil wrench on first check that this is actually an 8 millimeter okay 8 millimeter is on that is on I am above so I'll open up. pulling towards the front I didn't have enough to open the valve fully so I had to retake off and re-put it on so take two open decent little bubble there guys don't bother with bleeding the uh, clutch but it's a part of the same system as the brake fluid so if you're doing a flush I don't understand why you wouldn't it's right here it's pretty accessible once you have your front mount out uh, or once you have your top mount out sorry so should be good open shut open shut Dunzo. So I'll stick the bottle down beside the starter there and I'll 
pop that, let the line drain. So at this point, what I like to do, and it's totally up to your guys' preference and amount of brake fluid that you have, I like to go back to each four corner and do a quick one-two bleed. And get a 100% all the air out of my system. Uh, you see I repumped the tank back up to 17 psi. So I'm going to go to each uh, corner again and redo my bleeding and I'll get back to you after that. Okay guys, back over at the master cylinder. So I've gone and bled, re-bled all my brakes twice and the clutch twice. Now I'm ready to remove the pressure tank. Uh, my line is basically right at perfect for the line that I want uh, in the master cylinder. So I'm going to relieve the pressure by twisting the head off of the pressure tank but not taking the cap off the master cylinder. So I will go and release. Now what I'll do is I will take the lid off and I'll put my cap back on there right away. So from here I probably have a bottle of brake fluid. So I've gone through at least a bottle, a bottle and a half ish. So I'll put the leftover back in a one of my brake fluid bottles. Okay, so I've gone and placed a little bit back. I want to just touch a fill to bring that up to right on perfect spec line. And voila, I have a brand new Brembo brake flushed. brake fluid system. Wipe down this if there's any spills. And that's how you do a brake fluid flush 
on a Subaru of any sort or any car basically follows this trend so if you liked what you've seen let me know if you liked or do something differently or think I should switch something up from how I do it please let me know um, I like to hear back from you guys give me comments give me feedback if you like this video give me a thumbs up like my car did and please guys subscribe to me if you can I have tons of content like this coming uh, I appreciate the subscribe it really helps me out a lot it gives me the feedback that I'm doing something right and that you guys value what I do so please give me a uh, subscribe and a like and I'll thank you guys a lot and really enjoy chatting with you guys if I get a chance to if you comment so with that I'll leave you there good luck with your own and have fun with your cars take care guys